If you're on medication and you've tried in the past and failed to come off medications because you had a symptom reemergence, you're not going to be in a psychological mindset of going through that again because withdrawal syndromes are really, really hard. And so what I find in my practice is that when people stay on the medication and they do find all the root causes with us and make changes in their life, they find that they're getting better and the medication has it changed. Mm -hmm. And so they'll have more confidence in them being able to come off medication because they know confidently that the medication was not the reason why they got better. And by the way, the antidepressant withdrawal syndrome is taken care of more easily because you're in a better state of mind but you're also making your own serotonin and dopamine, all in your own neurotransmitters because they are made in the gut. 80% of your neurotransmitters are made in the gut. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Integrative Women's Health Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jessica Drummond, founder and CEO of the Integrative Women's Health Institute. And I am so excited to introduce you today to Dr. Stein and Sylvia Covelli. We are going to be talking today about a very unique approach and a, and a widely integrative approach to depression and other brain-based mental and physical health challenges that I think could really become a model for how many complex chronic illnesses are best approached. So welcome so much, Sylvia and Dr. Stein. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, good morning. So before we dive in, Sylvia, could you summarize what this program is, who it's for, and why anyone should care? (laughs) <laughs> okay. So, I mean, everything was born because I struggled with depression for over 25 years. And honestly, I searched so much and I was unable to find effective treatment. I also faced a lot of misinformation and just plainly said, say the doctors could not help me. So after going through all that and I, you know, and then I, I, I managed to recover with a program that I created myself. And so that's why, like, the Healing Depression Project was born. And it is a program that later, when I felt the calling of sharing this with other people, I brought it to the doctors, Dr. Stain here, and other wonderful doctors and professionals to put this program in a structured way and to add all the sciences that um, that now it has. So it's a program specifically designed um, for people that have been struggling with depression for a long time. So it's people maybe so that's with chronic depression or people that have been told they have treatment resistant depression. And, and honestly, people that have lost hope in the process that have been struggling with that for, I don't know, 5, 10, maybe 25 years like me or someone that I just talked a few days ago, 40 years. And it's just to, to bring this completely like, you know, functional medicine approach. It has functional medicine, metabolic psychiatry, which is something really cool, and lifestyle medicine. And we're putting all that together in a powerful program to be able to, to really get this thing out of their body and their minds and their emotions and just, you know, in a very, um, with a very whole person approach. So Dr. Stein, when we think about depression, originally kind of the medical model of depression is that it's a mental health, emotional, behavioral challenge that you know, can be solved by modulating various brain neurotransmitters, but it's not really thought of as a whole metabolic physiological disease process. So what's the different take on this approach for healing the brain in a more kind of body mind way versus emotional behavioral, or just simply kind of supporting certain deficiencies in the brain, right, uh, right. neurotransmitted wise. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there has been the model of the bio psychosocial approach, not purely psychiatric in terms of the way Freud <laughs> talked about it, but you know, it did evolve into a biopsychosocial approach where there are certain medical conditions 
all by rare, you know, that need to be ruled out to determine whether or not it's contributing to or causing the psychiatric problem. But there's so little connection in that, even that concept. And there's very few diagnoses like hypothyroidism, B12 deficiency, or folate deficiency that are known to uh, cause depression uh, in and itself. Um, but those aren't necessarily uh, even sometimes some doctors don't even do the blood work to even determine that from mm. a psychiatric uh, perspective. It's usually left up to a medical, like a primary care provider or a non-psychiatric provider to rule those things out. And once they've been quote unquote ruled out, then they're transferred to psychiatric care. And then it's deemed that it's all in, in the head. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of research now that shows that there is multiple root causes to depression, which I, you know, outlined in my book, what if it's not depression, your guide to answers and solutions, um, is that there's many overlooked causes. It's related to food, chronic infections, toxins, stress, and hormones. But the metabolic piece is a newer concept. That's where the metabolic psychiatry comes in, where it's related to the mitochondria of your cells that creates energy. And that depression is a problem with energy metabolism. Mm. And, and that there are, there are certain diets that have been known to resolve neurodegenerative issues like epilepsy. You know, there's a ton of research and there are neurologists that actually prescribe the ketogenic diet to treat epilepsy, you know, which is a brain problem, right? And so mm -hmm. why is the psych, the depression or the mental health symptoms not going to be part of that? So there's a, a, a lot of cutting edge research now in the past five, 10 years. Actually, there's research to support this. Uh, that many years ago, but it's becoming a new um, emerging, coming a get back around again to to support that depression and any and other mental health disorders are related to metabolism on a cellular level. And I think for those of us in clinical practice for you know decades, as everyone here has either been in clinical practice or in your case, Sylvia, trying to navigate the system for decades, right. we may even understand that, right? That nutritional strategies, tools exist for improving mental health. We know that exercise is one of the most beneficial tools we have for really? depression. Mm -hmm. uh, as a physical therapist, actually, we have a brand new journal now that was just announced recently about the kind of physical therapy of mental health, which I think is really important because Absolutely. we know exercise is helpful. We know ketogenic diets or at least relatively low carb and metabolic supportive diets are helpful. Mm -hmm. We know certain supplements. We know you know, circadian rhythm and daylight and not being in front of our computers so much. And all of this is helpful for our mental health. But here's where I think your program is unique. Actually supporting people to do that is very difficult in the traditional medical paradigm, because even if a practitioner knows all that, your average physician has seven to so minutes with each client. And then this takes behavior change and functional lab testing and unwinding of things. And it's a, it's a months to years supportive, deep process, not just a, a prescription for an antidepressant. So what's the new model of implementing all of these ideas that you guys have come up with? You're so right, Jessica. Just in general, change is really difficult. You know, you, you, you may hear people saying like, oh, people don't change. And there's some truth behind that. It is that because change is what happens is that it's so difficult to, to make it happen. And now where this is get gets even more complicated when we're talking to depression, because it's almost a paradox that the things mm. that you need in order to change your life, because you need, what do you need? You need to vitality. You need energy. You need hope because you're doing this because something's going to get better. And all these things that you need in order to create those changes are, you know, the same things that depression takes away from you. 
So you get into a position when someone tells you like, yeah, no, go out for a walk, like exercise, do this. You can't even take a shower. And now there is this, you know, people telling you like this list of things to implement. So I think this is even more important uh, with depression. If you were lucky enough that they told you about these strategies of like lifestyle changes, because honestly, conventional psychiatry does not do that. So, Mm -hmm. but if you got that information, then there is the other step of like how. So our program, besides the functional psychiatry, all the functional medicine piece and the metabolic psychiatry, we, a fundamental piece of the program is lifestyle medicine at its best, empowered by the science of how to create new habits. So it's a science of habits formation. And Mm -hmm. this is going to be present throughout the program. This is a residential program, retreat style. So, and 30 days at the retreat house, and then 15 days follow up at home, because that's the other piece, integration, that we can talk later about it. But during these Mm -hmm. 30 days, what we're doing is really helping people, you know, through science, first, to break from bad habits, just plainly bad habits that are affecting your depression, you know, like from, you know, some things that might look so simple as like staying late at late at night, because that's affecting like your sleep to other things that are more complicated, like really changing your diet and changing it like, you know, in a, in a, in a strong way, diet is difficult to change. That's what you have been eating since you were young. That comes from family. It has a lot of like components around food. Then you're sharing food with the people that you live with. So also like making these changes. So it's like an exercise and so many other ones, like how stress management, which includes meditation, being able to regulate, you know, your nervous system. So we start like slowly because we understand when the people arrive, like their mental and physical state, like they're completely like energy drained. So we do something like a step-by-step, you know, that helps people to break from those bad habits and start slowly to implement new habits that are that will that are building one upon the other upon the other until like this um, person has you know a, a morning routine and an understanding of what's affecting them because for depression everything is affecting you even you know what do you choose to watch on Netflix what are you listening mm. to like everything that comes through your senses is somehow feeding that depression, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're doing to so that the person can really have a transformation and sustain that those gains that are made during the program. Because when depression has become chronic, then you really need to change basically who you are. We obviously teach women's health coaching here at the Integrative Women's Health Institute. So the goal is to use these coaching strategies aligned with the recommendations so that, and I think what's so unique about your program is you have the coaches right there at the residential facility where I think that's such a gift to have 30 days in a very well-supported environment with the coaches to make these changes kind of come out of that fog, that low mitochondrial function fog, that energy depletion fog, that just all the habits that you were using, I think we can quite frankly say to sort of keep yourself alive, but not healthy, right? Right. The thing, you know, I did want to add that each of these methods, including the exercise, there's research that shows that exercise is equal or better than uh, an antidepressant, you know, so yeah. every method that we're going to be implementing is supported by research. And so no one has actually put all these pieces together and habits to act as Sylvia talked about and done on a daily basis. I mean, Sylvia, as part of her story has indicated that she has done upwards of 60 programs and, mm. and, and, They all helped a little, but when she really put her mind to it and realized like, wait a second, I really need to put my life on hold and really figure out what's right for me and 
She habit stacked all the things that she found some benefit from and then found that doing all of them all at the same time allowed her to become free of depression. That's the goal here for us to teach that and to support that and watch people get well. And and one thing that she didn't mention is that after the 30 days, you're going to have a plan to go home and integrate this in your plan. So that's all pre-planned as to what are you going to do when you get home? And you're supported for two weeks by phone or Zoom. And uh, and every single day you are, t- you are connected to somebody who will help you to integrate it back into your life. So we plan the integration and then we support the integration because everybody has a different life. Everybody mm-hmm. has different circumstances that they have to cope with. And so that's where the fine tuning piece comes in. And, uh, and you're, you know, we're hoping for a high level of success by doing this in, in this manner. Six weeks. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, I think that's a really good foundational start. We have that we find the exact same thing with every complex chronic illness that we work with here at the Integrative Women's Health Institute. It's endometriosis, long COVID, perimenopause, menopause symptoms, because like you said, you have to do all of these things at the same time. They're a little bit sequential in that habit stacking. You you can only implement so many things at first at once, especially because in my experience, my clients don't get to, I always say to my clients, look, I could get people better much faster if everyone was like just joining me on the island of Bali or something. And we were just like, you didn't have to make your own food. You didn't have to drive your kids to school. You didn't have to go to work, right? Like the the, the uh, recovery would be much faster. But I think as you said, when, and what I always tell them is, but then you would probably have to go back to right. your regular life. So we have right. to learn how to integrate that into your regular life. But that jump start is so valuable because people will feel the changes more quickly, mm-hmm. which I think is very motivating. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And people will likely feel a lot better. I mean, in my in my private practice at Functional Mind, people feel better uh, pretty uh, quickly within a year when they've been suffering, you know, sometimes within months, but, but definitely within a year, especially yeah. if they've been suffering for years and years and on this medication merry-go-round, so to speak. I mean, I'm not anti-medication, but we ex- are expanding the toolkit of, yeah. of ways to improve depression and anxiety. So they'll feel much better faster and then realize that Oh wow, this is not my identity. This is not my personality. This is not a weakness. Hmm. This is a problem in my body that's affecting my brain. This is a problem with rhythms, you know. So even how stress reduction is addressed by cutting edge methods of vagal nerve stimulation and limbic retraining and mindset uh, reframing and you know looking at limiting beliefs. You know, these are all going to be addressed uh, and we're going to have psychodrama. There's so many layers that we're going to be uh, um, that we're going to be providing that every aspect, no stone will be uh, unturned, so to speak. Yeah. And, you know, one thing you just said, which I I see all the time as well, is I think this jumpstart is so valuable because of exactly what you said. You have the opportunity to stack all of the tools. You can individually refine it. People can put down their other responsibilities and their other stressors and at least kind of put them to the side while they learn how to heal from a physiologic and emotional perspective and then kind of bring them back in and figure out how they're going to deal with them. Mm -hmm. But really the recovery when someone's been suffering for so long, but, or even if it's an acute severe situation, the recovery takes months to years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, do you have health coaches follow or the opportunity for health coaches and your team to follow these people for, you know, three, six, 12, 18 months, something like that? I mean, one of the things that I wanted to add um, to what is being said is that the program, it's besides building on these habits, 
like the heart really of it is the training piece. So we consider the program a training in the sense that is many programs that I did, like I went to it and then I was feeling so good because they were feeding me this amazing food. And there was like, the, you know, they were like, you know, guiding every step. But here, what we do is that we teach the person. So for example, if it's about food, we're going to go from like, you know, ingredient choppings, like where to chop, how mm-hmm. to chop, all the cooking. So it's, we're putting all these tools in the, uh, for the person to, to really be able, our goal is that the person can replicate it at home. It's same with meditation. We're going to be, for example, like explaining like, you know, the whys, the how, giving the person all the audios needed and so, so with each practice. So this person will have like, all these amazing tools that know in the regular programs, like you don't really get them. And then you get back home and you say like, oh, how was that? Oh, I don't remember exactly how to do this. Oh, I wish I had. So in this case, like the person is going to, to, to have that. And in the integration piece, before they leave, we put in like a, what Achina was saying, like a whole program specifically like for their lives but something very detailed like that includes who do you live with, where do you live, and how you can actually, you know, do this on your daily life. And answering to, to your question to your question about the health coaches, now um, for the for the for the first programs that we're running, we are including a 12 month follow up. That is, you know, monthly follow-ups uh, or bi-weekly follow-ups by health coaches. So that's um, just to 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 see, you know, besides the 15 days of implementation, which is daily with us. So that those 15 mm. days are still part of the program. You're not supposed to at that moment go back to work, but really your job is to, you know, be working on how you're going to implement this into your life. And we're going to be there with you every day. But then after that, we have um, health and life coaches that are going to to be doing the monthly follow-up for up to a year. And we're also going to be linking the person. That's that's from our side, like virtually. But we're going to be, you know, giving referring the person to local um, functional medicine psychiatrists and local uh, functional medicine health coaches that they can have, you know, like one on one and continue, continue their, um, yeah, their journey. Because you're right, it's not about just one month. Yeah, that's great because, you know, obviously we train health coaches to understand all of this, right? Our health coaches understand this. They understand the power of exercise for depression. They understand the power of nutrition. But they're the real experts in, so, you know, the functional medicine physicians are the real experts in kind of coming up with a specific uh, plan, if you will. Like you said, the details of what's the supplement stack, what's the, you know, where are you ready to begin? A physical therapist might also be really helpful of like how how hard can they push the exercise where we're not going to actually make things worse? What kind of exercise versus, you know, that kind of thing. But then the real, the, not the real work, all of this is the real work, but the real implementation comes over time when people come up against the barriers of change. And, you know, the reason our health coaches are specialized in women is that often women have to overcome so much more programming around worthiness and Mm -hmm. childcare. You know, even working women have to do about 60% more around the house and childcare and, you know, elder care and these kinds of things that their implementation of their own care gets really difficult. There are a lot more barriers. So how many, what percentage would you say of the people going through your program are women? From research and talking to a psychiatrist, we are thinking about 70 to maybe 80%. Yeah. Not surprising. So, yeah. yeah. Most likely. It'll be mostly women. Yes. Any insight to, I just want to briefly talk about depression in perimenopause and menopause, which obviously has that hormonal distinction. Mm-hmm. 
What are some of your, you know, obviously hormones could be a big piece of that, but how do you, how are you looking to address that specifically in this program for women in their forties and fifties? Well, certainly that's going to be assessed. We're going to do a comprehensive functional testing and assessment. So the hormones will be tested for whether um, they're on hormones or not. So depending on whether a person's on hormones or not, or in perimenopause or menopause, you can approach it differently, but we'll certainly get blood work and probably urine testing to determine their status and and make recommendations uh, based on that. So certainly a lot of women who are going through perimenopause and menopause are basically just handed SSRIs and have no assessment at all. So at least we'll be providing this information and whether they take by and, you know, would be have to be treated with bioidentical hormones, in my opinion, you know, with the proper training uh, in either by someone in their area, or we could potentially even start them on hormones if that's something that they're amenable to. So absolute hormones will be tested. The thing that it's important to know for people to know is that, you know, hormones are affected by stress. So if you're in fight flight and have this cortisol, um, you know, stimulation and, you know, high cortisol levels, that's going to shut down your hormones. So we certainly will educate people about that dynamic. And certainly the thyroid is involved as well. And so all of the hormones, not just the sex hormones, all the hormones are going to be looked at and, and how they interplay with each other and create and manifest symptoms, how they show up as symptoms. So by the way to do that is to get a timeline of, of, you know, where their symptoms occurred, when they occurred, when they worsened, when they got better to see if hormones are actually playing a part. So certainly if someone's had a depression for 30 years and it didn't really change when they hit perimenopause and they actually transitioned fine into menopause, then, you know, maybe that's not an issue. But if they say, like, oh my gosh, ever since I had postpartum depression and ever since I went into perimenopause, I've been to so many doctors and they keep just telling me it's my head. And it's like, and I, I really believe it's my hormones, you know, like that's a different kind of history. So one of the things I did want to mention because it's, it's on my mind and I've been asked this question many times is like, is it okay that I'm on medication? Mm. And, you know, do I have to stop my medications? And it's like, no, you don't have to stop your medication. Certainly, I think if you are having symptoms of uh, um, increased symptoms that you aren't able to tolerate so that you can function in the program, that might be addressed. But if you're having side effects of the medications, that also should be addressed, maybe a reduction in medication. But if you're stable, let's say, stably depressed without side Mm -hmm. effects from the medications, I actually recommend that you stay on the medications because for two reasons, if you're on medication and you've tried in the past and failed to come off medications because you had a sy- symptom reemergence, you're you're not going to be in a psychological mindset of going through that again because withdrawal syndromes are really, really hard. And so what I find in my practice is that when people stay on the medication and they do the you know, do all, find all the root causes with us and, and make changes in their life. They find that they're getting better and the medication hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. And so they'll have more confidence in then being come off, being able to come off medication because they know confidently that the medication was not the reason why they got better. And by the way, the, the depression withdrawal syndrome, antidepressant withdrawal syndrome is, is handled, is taken care of more easily because you're in a better state of mind, but you're also making your own serotonin and dopamine, all in your own neurotransmitters because they are made in the gut. 80% of your neurotransmitters are made in the gut. So if the gut brain connection is working, then it's going to be easier for you to come off of the antidepressant as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Your body is more physiologically more resilient. You're you've mm-hmm. got more of your own healthy levels of brain neurotransmitters being created. So that's a lot more peaceful of a withdrawal experience for sure. Right. So before we wrap up, I'd love to hear a bit more. You know, our audience is primarily health and wellness professionals and health coaches. And obviously many of them are going to want to work for you after this. They'll be very well trained to do that. Um, How did you 
put this together from more of a business standpoint because it is so intense. It's it's difficult to get, you know, there used to be, I work in primarily chronic pain and there we used to have pain management multidisciplinary centers, which were very effective, but then stopped being reimbursed by insurance because they were very expensive. Mm. So how were you able to put together this more inpatient, you know, not even, I would say inpatient, as you said, Sylvia, yeah. retreat is really right. a better word, word for it. Um model where people can take a moment, four to six weeks, step out of their lives and actually get root cause healing that then they can be supported to implement and maintain and continue to improve over time. It's a wellness retreat. If you like to think like if you were just doing, you know, I don't know if you're thinking about um, from from the business um, perspective, if you were running a 30 day meditation retreat, for example, but then mm. to that to that model, like what we um, what we added was all the medical piece. So the functional medicine doctor is at the retreat seeing the patients under her license, which is you know just allowed to to see patients at you know the office, the house, or at a retreat house. So that's mm-hmm. the you know like kind of like the the, the legal piece to look at it um, somewhat. And then to that, if you add all the um, counselors and psychologists, they're doing the same thing. They're seeing the people, you know, under um, their license. So, and then for the food, we got like the food is being done by a licensed nutritionist that that allow us to to be able to implement that. Plus we have the doctor, um, Achina, who will be also like recommending um, the diet and then, so you get you get all the diet during the days, and then that's how you're also getting the the, the medical piece in it. And then, um, you know, for all the other pieces, like really, like not it's not it's not necessary. Like you know, for yoga and somatic therapies, you can do that, um, no problem. From the perspective insurance, then that's really complicated. So. Number one, well, you both know for functional medicine is already um, a big challenge by itself. Mm-hmm. And so at this point, we don't have the insurance. What we're thinking, like uh, where we're going is to really get this as a medical facility, as an, um, you know, like more of a like hospital, like certification. And at that point, some of the insurance will kick in, but again, because of the holistic and whole person approach and integrative approach that we're having, they will only cover it pieces. But at this point, we have something better because we managed to get a lot of funding. We're getting a lot of um, good attention because the conventional, like the current model of psychiatry is, you know, clearly not working for many people. And that's why we're having you know, this increasing amounts of recurrent, persistent, treatment resistant, um, chronic depression. That means, what, what does that mean? That means that the treatments are not being effective because people, you know, if, if they were effective, then, they, you know, the story would be like, oh, I used to have or I had depression for six months. But that's not the story that we're hearing over and over again is that I've been depressed for 15 years and I've tried it all. You're like, oh, my yeah. God. So because of that, we get in a lot of funding and we're being able to pass this to the participants. So amazing scholarships that can cover even up to like 80% of the cost, which basically will leave you to the similar, if you were going to any residential program or any like a rehab, for example, Mm -hmm. you still have to pay the out of pocket. You still have to pay, you know, your maximum deductible. And for depression, it's only covered like partially too. So with the scholarships, you will be paying less than you will be paying in, um, in, um, in a, in a, in a fully like a cover um, situation insurance so we're very excited as part of this healing initiative to be able to be offering that um, to the people um, for sure for the um, next program that we're running in August. And we'll keep working on it to be able to offer and like um, hopefully pass that. Oh, that's great. So essentially, you've set this up as a wellness 
facility very similar to like a meditation retreat cent- uh, center with support from ind- individually licensed health professionals in that state. And then, you know, you essentially have a private funding arm that will able will be able to cover some of the costs for people. Yes. Okay. That's wonderful. So if someone would like to apply to be a part of this program, what is their next step? First of all, I want to, this, we have, um, I have developed uh, an, an e-guide that is called, Why Am I Still Depressed? Mm-hmm. And it shows, it has like very, very good resources for people that have been struggling with depression for a good while. And that will give them like a very good start up point with the project or without, you know, joining us. It will be something that I want your audience to have as something very useful. And this can Thank be found you. our our website's um, healingdepressionproject.com. And for this guide is will be healingdepressionproject.com slash gift. And there they can download it. It's, it's, it's full of um, resources. It's also like the four uh, main top mistakes that people, um, you know, like I was with chronic depression, keep doing that. It's, you know, clearly not helping us and a full guide of how to start this process. We have a website and we will also include all of these links in the show notes. Achina, do you know what the website link is? Yes. It's www.healingdepressionproject.com. Okay, great. Healingdepressionproject.com. That's correct. If you want to learn any more about this program and all of the other links will be included in our show notes. Thank you so much to both of you for your time and for this true, I'm sure, labor of love program. This is very comprehensive, absolutely the most comprehensive I've seen. Yes, it really is. It's cutting edge and it's revolutionary and much needed right now for a lot of people. Yeah. Thank you so much for your work. Thank Thank you. you for having us. I really appreciate you.